you have your Bibles today, I want you to turn to John, the book of John, chapter 1. You know, with the busyness of this time of year, it's a great reminder when Ben was able to sing and worship today and see through that video that we take a deep breath and we're reminded uh, why Jesus was born. So let's pray. Father, we thank you today. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. Father, for your amazing grace. Lord, we'll never, ever completely understand it, but when we step into you, we're so thankful to realize that you came to this world to give us eternal life. Just the way that we are, many ways, many ways, not deserving at all, but you're still willing to save all. We thank you. We give you all the glory for how we've been able to worship you today, and now we open your word in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we're looking at a book of John, and when we (coughs) share this with you, but when we look at John in chapter 1, If you're here visiting with us today, we probably do this about, I don't know, once or twice a year. So I I just feel comfortable with this. But I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, I have issues. Would you do that? (laughs) Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Go ahead. All right. Now, (laughs) she could see it from up here. But now, what I was going to add on to that, I was going to have you turn to the person and say, you have issues. (laughs) But but I thought there was a little too much grit in that. I just thought you might put a little bit too much in that, maybe as a husband or as a wife, you know, or whatever. But so, that being said, that being said, we have to come to the understanding that who Jesus is and what he's really done for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We worship a Savior who was born for that reason. You know, I was listening uh, to the news this week, and and, and I I think it's uh, compounded, if I can use that word, that this year uh, they're saying even more people are discouraged than last year, as far as this time last year, because they thought, well, okay, we can just get through this, and then next year we'll all be able to do whatever those normal things are around Christmas and get together. And now so many people aren't for one reason or, or another. But what I'm seeing and hearing is a, is a discouragement. And so I was listening to the news that 42% of adults have a grim outlook on the future. Think about that. 40, they, and a lot of times I don't believe everything. We don't believe everything we hear in the news. But I have a tendency to believe that because the people that you run into, they're, whether they're strangers or whether they're friends or someone you grew up with or, or family members, people are more discouraged now than ever. I believe one of the ways that that we can be encouraged, without a doubt, is to continue to understand God's amazing grace. And his amazing grace is Jesus. No matter what things look like, no matter what you're going through, God can still work through it. That's who he is. And that's why Jesus came. Well, John chapter 1 and verse 14 through 17 And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him, meaning John the Baptist, and cried out, saying, This was he whom I said, he who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me, meaning Jesus. And of his fullness we have all received grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, 
but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. You know, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. It's amazing to me when we read that, it's the words of Jesus. You say, what do you mean, Dallas? The word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. This, this is God's word. And the more that you and I are willing to believe that it's all about Jesus, the word became flesh, all about Jesus, the more that we're willing to believe that and we take it and we take it as such a high standard in our life that this book is real, that it is true, that this book is about Jesus who is full of grace and mercy and truth. That's what this book is. This book is a person. This book is a person that everything that we see in here points to Jesus Christ. And the more that we come to the understanding that we believe who Jesus is, what he's done for us, and the more we look on those pages and say, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, God with us. We looked at last week, been saying today, God with us. God's with you. He's with you right now in the catalyst that you and I have that it tells us right there. And his fullness we received, grace for grace. You know what that means? That means grace that we have, if we are right there with the Lord and we experience who he is, will never be emptied. Grace for grace. Jesus is mercy and he is grace. Mercy is, well, we deserve everything that we're supposed to get. Remember we talked about we have issues, right? We know ourselves better than anybody. And we know we don't deserve who we are in Jesus. And God says, you know, the mercy that I have because of my son Jesus Christ is the punishment, mercy, the punishment that you deserve, I'm going to give you a pass. I'm going to have compassion on you. I will give you mercy. And he's going to pass by and give us that pass because of Jesus Christ. Grace, grace for grace, grace that we have, God will, in the midst of who we are, you know yourself better than anybody. I know myself better. In the midst of who we are as a believer, if we really trust who Jesus is, God says, I'm going to still give you favor in your life. It's amazing to me, knowing who we are. And he tells us, and he closes there, for the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. We can point to the Old Testament, and we can look in there. The fullness of the Old Testament came through Jesus Christ. But the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament point us to where we can't get there. You can't work your way to heaven. You can't get there. But God tells us about his amazing grace and about you and I can come to the understanding to know that you still have hope. See, what's happening in our world today that you're being beat down from every angle that you can imagine, you can't see the future. What I want you to do today is when we experience God's amazing grace, I want you to see Jesus. I don't want you to see the future. When we see Jesus and we see who he is in our life and why he came to this world, it changes our perspective on what tomorrow might be. Let's look at another passage in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Well, how did that take place? How did we to get to the place that we have that amazing grace. Verse 14 of Hebrews chapter 4. Seeing that there we have a great high priest who passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace 
that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. I could say right now, what's your need? And we could jump down to the end of that verse. And that would be good in many ways. But in order to grasp the hope that we have today and understand that amazing grace is to know that whatever you're facing, you can look through that because you have a high priest who died on the cross for all our sins. And to know because of that, we have hope. We know no matter what happens in this life, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for us and that we're going to heaven. Knowing that we're going to heaven, then we can pull back and we can start to look at this life. Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. The devil is here to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I'm here to remind you of that today. He wants to steal your joy. He wants to kill every aspect of your marriage. And he wants to take your life. That's who the devil is. Jesus says, I've come to not only to give you eternal life, but as you live every day, no matter what news that you hear personally, no matter what is going on with maybe an adult child or what's going on at home or what, I don't know. But the good Lord tells us, because of what Jesus has done, we have this amazing grace. You know how the Lord uh, has helped me in my life as I've gone? You know how the devil comes at me more now than ever? How he has beat me up? It's how I was as a, as a dad. I think I was okay. Okay, Dad, I hope I was, but, but the devil just beats me up to know it. Should have done this, should have done that. You know, look at your kids now. You know, you know, right? I mean, don't tell them I said that, but <laughs> just will be, he never stops. Never stops. The way you stop him is you continue to understand God's amazing grace is to know that you're doing the best you know how to do. And when you fail, grace to grace, when you fail, you go to the Lord and say, Lord, I messed up here, will you, will you, will you help me? Because of Jesus Christ, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, because many times when things happen in this life, we, we automatically say, what did I do? This is happening to me. And we automatically say, well, I must have done this or done that, or I don't know why. And the Lord's saying, just look to me. The Lord is telling us that, that we can come boldly. You know what that means when it says we can come boldly through the throne of grace to find mercy and help in the time of need? That means you, that, that God knows everything about you. And you can take all that you know about you and you can bring it boldly before him and say, Lord, will you help me with this? Right into the throne room of heaven. That's where we can go. Because Jesus Christ made a way for us. It's his amazing grace that you and I are even still here today. We all have a testimony. We all have some area how patient God was with us. And because of his amazing grace, we're all here today worshiping because we know is everything that's going on in this world and 42% of people have a grim outlook of the future. You know, no matter what news that you heard last year that changed your life or shook you up, you can pull back and know Jesus is in control. I'm not going to see the future. I'm not going to see my health. I'm not going to see my marriage. I'm going to see Jesus Christ, who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm going to see Jesus Christ who tells us his kingdom come, thy will be done on earth on earth as it is in heaven. You can pull heaven down to this world and live in that way when you see who Jesus is. And 
your life and my life. What does he want to do as we close with today? This is our theme verse for our church. We've had it since we started the church many years ago in Romans chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. We'll close with this. But the free gift is not like the offense. In other words, what we did wrong. For if by one's man offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, meaning Jesus died for all, abound to many. And the gift is not like which came through the one who sinned, in other words, us, for the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. It all started back in the garden with Adam and Eve. But the free gift, which came from many offenses, resulted in justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace And the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. You know, I don't know. All of us have a certain point in time that we have a a destiny in our life, and we're here for so many years. And as we live in this life, God wants us to live with a joy that we can experience no matter what we hear, no matter what takes place in the news, no matter what you hear personally, God has a joy for us to experience. Grace to grace, as our outward body continues to deteriorate in this life, it says our inward spirit gets newer every day. God's grace. As you face whatever you're facing in this life, to know that you can have victory, is to understand who Jesus is. That while we were yet sinners, he died for us. And when we mess up and we do things we shouldn't do, he's there for us. And when the devil makes us feel guilty, Jesus is there for us and he forgives us. God's amazing grace is that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. From that day forward, the Lord has a plan, and look, my life and your life, how patient that he's been. That's his grace. That's his mercy. You are his child. All he wants is something amazing for your life. He wants to give you life and life more abundantly. And we worship him today in that grace And in that truth, to know that we'll never understand why he did what he did for us. But we can give our life to him and be thankful. You know, I was reminded, I was preparing for this message and thinking about how patient the Lord is with us. Uh, A few years ago, I was was doing a funeral. And and a lady came up to me after the, the funeral. She says, Dallas, can I talk to you for a minute? I said, sure. And she says, uh, she says uh, do, you, uh, do you realize how many people that you had that, that were praying for you? I said, well, I, I don't know what you're talking about. And she says, uh, I used to work. Now she goes back 40 years. <laughs> tell you how long ago it was. I was about 20. I don't know. She goes, I used to work at the McDonald's on Arlington and Waterloo Road. If you're old enough to remember, that was the only McDonald's here, really, in town. And she goes, uh, you used to come in there late at night. And, uh, and we all knew what was going on. And, and do you know how many people were praying for you? Wow. God's grace. That saved a wretch like me. God loves us so much. 
He's so patient with us. And all he wants in the midst of whatever we're doing to see him and to know that he has a plan for our life so we can have joy and peace. I see Jesus every day, our Savior, who gave us his word. He became flesh. This is Jesus. And the Holy Spirit that he gives us takes this and it becomes a catalyst. And the uniqueness and the miracle of this every day is when you and I are willing to open it up, exactly what you need for what you cannot see tomorrow, he will give you late tonight here, or he'll give you early in the morning when you open it up, he'll give you exactly what you need. Grace, mercy, truth, compassion. As a child of God, he loves you more than you could ever know. And as Ben led us this morning in a song that he sang, he was born and we saw that he gave his life, one, the one, Jesus Christ, so all would come to repentance and have life and life more abundantly. God's amazing grace is Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Remember how patient the Lord's been with you. He's got a plan. It's not changed. He loves you. He's with you. He's going to work it out. The devil will tell you anything imaginable to stop you from having joy. Father, we thank you that we're reminded once again through the power of your spirit that you came to be with us and you gave us your word, your spoken word. You, everything in this book is you. And it is amazing that you would die for us as sinners. It is amazing that you would give us mercy and that you would give us grace and we would reign in this life and have victory all because of you. Lord, reminded the day that you were born and we remember the time that we were born again. Ah, Lord, you're so patient, so loving, so full of grace. It never runs out. Lord, you've been so good to us. Lord, if there's someone here today watching, may they pray, Jesus, forgive me, a sinner. I believe that you are God's one and only son and that you came and lived a perfect life and that you died on a cross for all of my sins. And I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart to forgive me, to save me, of all of my sins from this day forward. Help me to live by your resurrection power. Jesus, if there's someone even here today as we stand and Ben leads us in an invitation song, friend, bring a friend, may someone come forward and ask you into their heart today. In Jesus' name.